So to start with, what three uh, policies would I like to see in the 2010 uh, Labour Party uh, manifesto? Well, there are so many things really that I think we could have done and uh, probably should have done already, but haven't for for whatever reason. Um, but there are there are a few things which I think stand out, and uh, the first thing uh, is renationalisation of the railways. As far as I'm concerned, <coughs> sorry, as far as I'm concerned, it's absolutely shocking that despite it being it being a policy supported by Labour Party conference and by a majority of the British people, we still haven't brought the uh, the railways back into public ownership. The companies, the franchises which run uh, the railways, um, make massive profits all the while. Rail fares continue to go up and up, j just to the point where, where at the moment in time, travelling by rail is simply too expensive for a majority of people. I think it's about, if I was going from Yeovil to London, it's about seventy, pa uh, seventy, sixty pounds, something like that, which is a day or two days wages for most people. You know, that's simply unaffordable, and uh, for that reason alone, if no other. Uh, we should take them back into public ownership because they don't represent value for money or, or necessarily provide an absolutely fantastic service for, for what you're paying. Um, the next uh, policy I would support in the Labour Manifesto would be the living wage. Um, as, far, as far as I'm concerned, one of the major achievements of, of, the, past, uh, of the current Labour government has been the minimum wage. But the thing with the minimum wage is it's precisely that, a minimum wage. The minimum amount a working man or a working woman could be expected to live off and to barely survive on. But that's not good. Um, what we need to do now is to have a living wage so to actually working people can have an expectation to a certain quality of life and so they can live with a certain sense of dignity. Um, so right next, um, massive house building, house building scheme. The We have a major major housing shortage in this country. Um, we need to build more homes, it's as simple as that but more importantly, we need to, we need to build homes which are fit for purpose. Um, you know, not just houses, building homes. Um, we have considerable waiting lists. Loads of people need housing, and uh, if we if we did build uh, houses, we'd be creating jobs as well, which would be good for the economy. And uh, one of the things which I seriously think we do need to to have a look at is uh, Thatcher's policy of uh, well, the right to buy, and we need to be certainly asking uh, whether that is still viable. Uh, given the uh, cur current housing shortage. Now the next question was uh, what issues will I be campaigning on if elected to Parliament? Well there are loads of issues again um, but we're in an economic downturn at the moment well, we're just emerging from an economic downturn um, so one of the things I think we need to be focusing on right now is sort of tackling the recession that doesn't mean tackling the deficit necessarily um, and I have elected to Parliament one of, the, one of the most important things I would do is uh, sort of jump straight in there tackle our uh, financial forums head on, but be vocal, in, very vocal in campaign, not just for cuts um, to public spending, but to tackle the downturn with investment, uh, such as, as, as I said, you know, in, in a massive house building scheme to create jobs and homes, investing in inf infrastructure and creating jobs, investing in green technologies. That's the way out of recession. The solution is not uh, market fundamentalism. It doesn't work. We know that the solution. To, to the downturn has, is, is not to deregulate the economy further, um, to not privatise the, the economy, for, privatise various, various aspects of the economy further. It's already been shown that that doesn't work and that's actually what got us in the mess in the first place. That's not the solution. So I'll be uh, in Parliament uh, making reminding people of that um, and also making sure that the people who, who should pay be paying for the recession do pay the, for the recession, making sure that it isn't working men and women who are lumped with the bill uh, for for the mess of, of, of capitalists, for bankers and everyone else. And the good place to start on tackling the recession, as far as I'm concerned, and this is what I'll be campaigning very strongly for, is it's completely eradicating and shutting down those tax havens. Most of them are British, ta British uh, controlled territories anyway. Um, we need to be making sure these companies uh, are paying tax uh, in this country, making sure wealthy individuals are paying tax in this country, and clawing back the millions and millions, if not billions, obviously billions of pounds, um, that these exceedingly wealthy individuals have avoided paying in tax. And now if we were to do this and to get that money back, there would be no need to, to turn to the public sector and public services and just to hit them with across the board massive cuts. So there would be no need for it. Um, another thing I will be campaigning for, and I think this is very important, is, is an end to PFI, that's Private Finance Initiative, in our National Health Service. Uh, but now, the, the PFI scheme that has... <clears throat> basically cost the taxpayer billions of pounds extra when it need not have. 
we have seen that PFI is not an efficient model for, for the financing of public projects. Simple as that. Um, the facts are, you know, it's a waste of money. Uh, it's a waste of money at a time when we have little money. Um, there's a excessive profiteering from, from PFI by private companies. And the whole purpose of PFI in the first place is to transfer the risk of a public project from the government to the private sector. Um, and under PFI, that doesn't happen at all. Um, and we, we know that because the government just set up the, the Treasury Infrastructure Finance Unit to bail out PFI projects with public money, which is absolutely bizarre and makes no sense whatsoever. Um, so a good place to, to start would be to, to end uh, the use of PFI in the NHS, also in schools as well and everything else. Um, and we need to start bringing the secondary services which are offered as part of PFI contracts, such as for security services, uh, catering and cleaning, and start bringing those back in-house. And we know we, we know it can be done because they've already started doing it in Scotland, so um, it's, it's absolutely viable. Um, so that, that's one of the other things I'll be campaigning for.